foundations of amateur radio. There's a fascination with space that arguably started long before the first time that human spaceflight was proposed by Scottish astronomer William Leach in 1861. Names like Sputnik, Mercury, Gemini, Apollo and Columbia speak to millions of people, and organisations like NASA, SpaceX and Blue Origin, to name a few, continue to feed that obsession. In amateur radio we have our own names, things like ARIS, or Amateur Radio on the International Space Station, or its predecessor, SAREX, the Shuttle Amateur Radio Experiment. Today, stories about people making contact with the International Space Station continue to make news. We have school programs where amateur radio ground stations schedule a call to speak with an astronaut in space, and we've been launching our own amateur satellites for a long time. Launched on the 12th of December 1961, Oscar-1, or Orbiting Satellites Carrying Amateur Radio, was built by a group of California-based amateur radio operators for $63. It operated for nearly 20 days, transmitting high in Morse on 144.983 MHz. The first amateur radio space voice contact was made on the 1st of December 1983, almost 40 years ago. It's surprising that in the age of technology such a significant event has been so poorly recorded for posterity. If you go searching for the actual audio, you'll discover several versions of this contact, including varying transcripts. I've attempted to reconstruct the wording, but I've yet to hear a complete and unedited version. For example, there's an ARRL movie called Amateur Radio's Newest Frontier, with out-of-sync audio. There's also an audio file with a transcript from an archived copy of a website by Whiskey 7 Alpha Papa Delta. The most recent one is on a video called Ham Official Documentary 2022, produced by the students from the School of Visual and Media Arts program at the University of Montana, and broadcast on Montana PBS on November 24th, 2022. So what follows is not necessarily complete. But, calling from Space Shuttle Columbia, it went a little like this. U.S. West Coast and calling CQ, calling CQ North America. This is W5LFL in Columbia. In another 30 seconds, I'll be standing by. Our spacecraft is in a rotation at the moment, and we're just now getting the antenna pointed down somewhat more toward the Earth. So I should be able to pick up your signals a little bit better in the next few minutes. So W5LFL in Colombia is calling CQ and standing by. Go ahead. This is W5LFL in Colombia. W5LFL in Colombia, orbiting the Earth at an altitude of 135 nautical miles, passing over the U.S. west coast and calling CQ. So W5LFL in Colombia is calling CQ and uh, standing by. Go ahead. W5LFL on STS-9, WA-1JXN, WA-1, Japan, X-Ray, Norway, WA-1JXN, French Town, Montana, WA-1JXN, standing by. Hello, W1JXN, WA-1, Juliet, X-Ray, November, this is W5LFL. I picked up your signals fairly weakly. I think our attitude is not really the best as yet, but you're our first contact from orbit. WA1, Juliet, X-Ray, November. How do you read? Over. On board STS-9, Space Shuttle Columbia, was Dr. Owen Garriott, Whiskey 5 LFL, now Silent Key. On the ground was Lance Collister, then Whiskey Alpha 1, Juliet, X-Ray, November, now Whiskey 7, Golf Juliet. NASA published an educational brief for the classroom that described Owen's setup as a battery-powered 5-watt FM transceiver feeding a split ring on a printed circuit board antenna that will be placed in the upper crew compartment window on the aft flight deck. Others reported that the radio was a Motorola handheld. Logging was done with a tape recorder velcroed to the transceiver. Owen describes the antenna as a well-designed handheld antenna known as a cavity antenna, which could be velcroed to the window. It was about 24 inches in diameter and looked somewhat like a large aluminum cake pan. There's an edited version of a similarly titled ARRL video called Amateur Radio's Newest Frontier, ARRL documentary featuring Owen Garriott, Whiskey 5 LFL, on STS-9 showing the antenna as a copper tube bent into a circle mounted inside an open aluminium box that was hinged on the window to face outwards. The NASA brief also described a range of frequencies and designated 145.55 MHz 
as the primary frequency over the United States. It included a whole section about synchronizing clocks using WWV in Fort Collins, Colorado, odd and even minute transmission schedules and descriptions on how this should work. Operating during time off, when the antenna was facing Earth, and being on air for about four hours during the mission, around 300 contacts were made across the globe. Today we continue to experiment in space. The call sign November 1 Sierra Sierra is heard on air regularly from the International Space Station. Astronauts are often licensed radio amateurs. There's a permanent repeater on the ISS. We launch research spacecraft called nanosatellites, or more popularly, CubeSats, for amateur radio at every opportunity. So far there's over 160 satellites, and the adventure continues. Speaking of experiments, albeit earthbound, the other day my whisper or weak signal propagation reporter beacon using 10 milliwatts was heard 13,455 kilometres away, in Sweden. That's 1.3 million kilometres per watt. What have you been up to in amateur radio lately? I'm Ono, Victor Kilo 6, Foxtrot Lima, Alpha Bravo.